So what's up everybody, I'm Roth, and welcome to yet another This Week on Game Skinny, and I am joined again with Steven here. Hey everybody. Um, so, jumping into it, The Last of Us sold 3.4 million copies in Which with, uh, you know, armchair uh, gamer math means they made 52 gajillion dollars. Yes. I think that's what was going around. 52 gajillion. gajillion. They could build 12 Death Stars with the revenue <laughs> from, from this game. Um, so if you just take what box sales at sixty bucks, it's you know twenty point four million, which somewhere in there, somewhere in there, it's not so bad. Chump um, change, really. You no, know, <laughs> I mean the game has pretty high production values, so I imagine it was not cheap to produce. Um, but I imagine they are super, super, super stoked to have the fastest selling title of two thousand thirteen. Yeah, they at least made maybe their money back. I don't know. I feel like the game cost them more than twenty million dollars. I don't know. We'd have to see, you know, we'd have to see some financial reports to really make those statements. But, but from playing it, and my personal experiment, uh, my personal experience of playing it, it's not worth how much money they spent on making it. I don't know about that. I mean, I think <laughs> that the the game unfortunately starts really slowly, and if you don't have the ability to just play it and get through that, I think it's a bit of a drag. Yeah. Like the gameplay is kind of miserable to me, to be honest. The game mechanics. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the story is beginning to develop, but I'm not really enjoying the combat so far. And, you know, the aiming is a little the aiming's a little off if you just want to sort of play the game the game casually. Most of the guys early on, particularly you're fighting, you know, end off end up at that distance where they're the size of like a pinhead. But we'll see. I'm not far enough along to really cast judgment on the entire game. But I do know that that awesome opening cutscene and then dropping you right into the boring experience of learning about Joel's miserable existence 20 years later is just not engaging. Yeah. And everybody tells me that it gets better after that, so we'll see. Well, no spoilers, but the ending sucks. Anyway, moving on. That com- that came from Gabriel Cross. I almost forgot to mention. All right, so we had Lars born $14 million dollars. To Star Citizen, they've raised fourteen million. So what did they start at with their original pitch on Kickstarter? Their original pitch on Kickstarter was a nine hundred thousand dollar goal. Uh, they kicked the crap out of that with like nearly four million, or maybe it was over four so million. They're like seventeen times their original goal. Yes. So to so me, are we getting seventeen times the game? Or yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, I think that seventeen times the polish doesn't always look like seventeen times the game when you just look at it. Uh, But, I mean, certainly that should be enough for them to do a lot with this game. And Chris Roberts has a, you know, a pedigree. He's, he's, he's had an experience making the types of games they're talking about. Um, that should be enough money to make it in a very modern way. Um, I just hope that they can stay focused enough. Yeah. You know, instead of, I see, like, factions growing in the Star Citizen community where all these people talk about the game being the game they want it to be, and I hope there's, there doesn't develop some disconnect. Right, there's many different gameplay styles that they've put into the yeah, game. Yeah, I mean, they've... They're, they're they've, concentrating on too many angles of They've gameplay. talked about a lot of things, you know, and, like, yeah. and any time I hear about like, a game that says, like, we're this, end of this, end of this, you know, I, I sort of think of it almost like a multifunction printer, fax, copier, scanner... Mm-hmm. Where it's like, yeah, it has all those things, but are any of them really that great? So I hope they really focus on some of the core gameplay, even if they do add those other things, that they really decide what their game's about and build that with the money, even if they do introduce those secondary things. Because they got to have one thing they sort of hang their hat on. Um, but I'm excited. I mean, another yeah. space game? You know, yeah. the world needs another space game. Yeah, and hopefully with, so. you know, they've made more crowdfunded money than any other crowdfunded project ever so they it better be yeah. you know it, it can't lot. be terrible yeah there's a, it's I mean, gotta be at there's least a lot of right. hype for it yeah. it's got a it's got a developer that's got some history in the area the world needs another another space game uh i hope that their their fortunes just increase so we'll see so um another well-selling product the ps4 is uh no longer pre-orderable at gamestop because i'm assuming they yeah, due to high demand, they didn't. PlayStation had Sony had no idea that they were going to get as many pre-orders as they did. The uh, the whole Xbox One fiasco okay, so has outsold them. Let's talk about my cynical side of this. 
you say that you're gonna allow GameStop <laughs> to have unlimited pre-orders, and like four days later, you're like, oh my gosh, I, I can't handle. I it. can't believe <laughs> you actually ordered so many of these. It, it, you know, I think it's a PR stunt. I think they're they're doing this just to create mm-hmm. artificial demand, um, and we'll see. Nonetheless, I, clearly the pre-order interest is high. So, yeah, and I think I heard that Xbox you can Xbox One can no longer be pre-ordered from uh, Best Buy. I'm pretty sure they sold out there as well. Sure, but that's a whole nother. Let's not get into that. Um, so Sony released over a few days. Well, I guess it was over one day. They released several posters of this where it says where uh, when worlds collide and they were just teasing us on what it could turn out to be and guess what ratchet and clank yeah new ratchet and clank game called into the nexus i'm excited so this is one of my favorite games from childhood and they're finally making another one i'm very excited is it going to be a platformer yeah they they, that's what they were saying that they're going to try and go back to how the series was originally Rather than what they went into, where hmm. it was just uh, hack and slash with guns. Interesting. Um, I had a lot of fun. I, I never really got deeply into this game, but I played it a few times and had a lot of fun with it. Um, so yeah. we'll shall see. And I know uh, there's a lot of people excited about it. I'm not sure. Uh, they are making a Ratchet and Clank movie. I'm pretty sure. So I don't know if maybe they're doing this in tandem with the movie hmm. and making them involved in some way. I don't know. That's just speculation from me. Or maybe the the Ratchet and Clank movie is. Let's just go ahead and say there's hours. going to be a Ratchet and Clank movie. It's based on this game. That's our prediction. We're yeah, going to and it might it. happen one day. Yes. Yeah. Keep an eye out. All right. So, uh, in my mind, some bad news. Blizzard exploring some microtransactions. So, are they really exploring microtransactions, or is this just internet BS? I think I think it's probably more internet BS because people what, overreacting to the public test realm item of 100. percent They really ad, they really added a store to the game, and that's pretty clear. And then there's this this item out there that people go, if they sold that, this would be really bad. And so people yeah. see a store, they see an item that they sold, and then you know, classic like let's go on Reddit and mash the two together and claim it's already happened. Right. And so for all these people out there that are talking about this. They're acting as if they're already selling, you know, plus XP and plus, like, right, you know, but plus not. one level potions on a microtransaction thing, which they're not. And, right. I mean, Blizzard was pretty clear. They said, they said, what we're really going to do is just sell the crap you already buy on our website right, in-game. Yeah. yeah, instead of going to which, battle.net slash store, you go yeah, in they the just game said, and you can buy it there. They just said, instead That's of you closing the game and opening your wallet, you're going to be able to open your wallet right in the game to buy the stuff you were already buying. Right. Now, at the same time, they've got, what, 8 million players, however many million in the U.S. Right. I mean, I would put a store in the game, too, yeah. so that if one day the community was more willing to accept microtransactions, the transition would be easier. So, yeah. I mean, this could definitely be a foot-in-the-door thing, but it, it certainly doesn't seem to be what they're going to do with it off the bat, right off the bat. Yeah. They're I, not introducing microtransactions. Yeah, they're, they are not going to kick the subscription model anytime soon. They make way too much money to get rid of the subscription yeah, model. I mean, I'm yeah, not too worried yeah. about it, but it's a thing. And I guess a teeny bit of worrying is, is worthwhile. <laughs> um, so we wanted to give a shout-out to Max J and Chad Chuina Albritton for winning the our Dragon's Profit Correspondent Contest. Uh, we will be giving them... The uh, full media badges and and travel, travel and hotel and everything. Basically, to get out. they get a trip to SOE Live uh, to cover it. They're going to cover Dragon's Profit for the next year uh, yes. on the site. They, um, we're, uh, they get so. one once a month posts yep. about uh, particularly Dragon's Profit. Yeah, um, specifically. But yes, they get to go out and enjoy SOE Live in Las Vegas like ballers. So SOE Live is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Linda Linda Brassy Carlson uh, makes it an interesting experience. She's she's uh, their community manager. Uh, I'm sure she, they, she will be there as a dwarf. Um, they have they have a good time with it. Um, Sony does a lot for their community there, and um, it'll be really cool. And you'll so, get to hear about it from hear about our it. correspondents, yep. Max J and Chad. But uh, that's it for this week on Game Skinny. Thanks for hanging out. See ya.